Hello everyone, a warm welcome to the Smart RN channel. My name is Henry. In our video today, we are going to start looking at the Reno system. The Reno system is a very important system in our bodies. Any defect in this system will be reflected in the other systems of the bodies. In other words, any defect in this system will also result in problems in other systems of our bodies. So let us see what are the main players in this system. The renal system consists of the kidneys, the ureters, the bladder, and the urethra. And these systems help in the maintenance of what we call homeostasis. Homeostasis is a state of balance that is required in various systems in our bodies. And this ensures our survival and the normal functioning of our bodies. We have got systems like, for example, the fluid system. We require a balance in the fluid in our bodies. We require a balance in the electrolyte concentration in our bodies. We require a, a balance in our temperatures. We require a balance in our pH. This is homeostasis. So the kidneys play a role in the maintenance of this homeostasis. Kidneys' main function is to filter blood. And when they filter blood, they remove waste that result in the formation of urine. This urine that is formed is stored for some time in the bladder. In other words, when urine is produced by the kidneys, it will be stored in the bladder for some time before it is the appropriate time for it to be removed from our body. So the bladder plays a role by storing this particular urine. On the other hand, the ureters and the urethra are involved in transporting this unit, urine which has been formed in the kidneys. The ureters transport the urine from the kidneys to the bladder where we have said it is stored for some time and when it is time for this urine to leave our bodies, it flows, uh, the, ure the urethra helps it to flow from the bladder to the outside of our bodies. So the, the urethra transports urine from the bladder to the outside of our bodies. The kidneys, we, there are two kidneys. And there's the left kidney and the right kidney. And these kidneys are located behind the abdominal contents and they are located on either side of the spinal column. Now, if you look at the kidneys, you realize that the right kidney is located slightly lower than the left kidney. Now, this is because of the position of the liver. The liver lies above the right kidney, and as such, it tends to move that right kidney to a level that is slightly lower when compared to the left kidney. What are the functions of the kidneys? One, as we have said, the kidneys are involved in urine formation. And they do this by filtering blood to remove waste. So when we have urine from our bodies, it is actually uh, waste which have been filtered from the blood by these kidneys and such waste are being removed from our bodies through this particular urine. So urine, uh, kidneys are involved in urine formation through blood filtration that removes or ex excretes uh, waste from our blood. Number two, kidneys play a role in the regulation of fluid and electrolyte balances. Remember we say they play a role in maintenance of homeostasis. So when we have excess fluid in our bodies, it is the work of the kidneys to ensure that this fluid is removed from our bodies so that it does not have an effect on our health. Remember, people have got kidney problems. You see that this patient, one of the things they have is that the fluid, there's fluid accumulation, especially in the, in the extremities, in the lower limbs, in the upper limbs, in their faces. This uh, is this because of a failure in their kidney. So the kidneys play a role such that when we have this excess fluid in our bodies, it is the kidneys that actually remove or uh, uh, remove this fluid from our body. They also play a role in electrolyte balances. We need a balance in the electrolyte concentration in our bodies. For example, 
We need a balance in the potassium. So when there is excess potassium, the kidneys clear it out. When there is less potassium, the kidneys hold on to it. Even fluid. If we have less fluid in the kidney, uh, in, in our bodies, you find that these people are not urinating. Why? Because the kidneys are holding on to that little fluid that we have in the body to maintain homeostasis. So the health in the regulation of fluid and electrolyte balance. Kidneys play a role in the regulation of blood pressure. And how do they do this? They do this by producing an enzyme referred as renin. And this enzyme is the one that initiates what we refer to as the RAS system. RAS simply refers to the renin and utensin aldosterone system. So what happens? When the kidneys sense that there is decreased perfusion, when there is decreased blood flow to the kidneys, what they do, they produce this enzyme to help in increasing blood pressure. So the enzyme helps to initiate this system, which will increase the blood pressure to ensure that the kidneys are perfused properly. They have enough perfusion. So kidneys help in the regulation of blood pressure to ensure there is proper perfusion. Kidneys also help or they produce what you call erythropoietin. Erythropoietin is a hormone. And this is a hormone that stimulates the stem cells in the bone marrow to produce more red blood cells. So kidneys help in blood formation through the production of erythropoietin, which stimulates the stem cells in the bone marrow to produce red blood cells. Kidneys play a role in acid-base balance. Now, this is very important because we have said that there must be a balance in various systems in our bodies for our bodies to function normally. Now, we have acidosis and alkalosis. These are two states which are not good for the normal functioning of our bodies. In acidosis, there is increased acidity in our bodies. So this has to be dealt with. In alkalosis, there is increased alkalinity. There is an increased concentration of bicarbonate in our bodies. This is not good for our bodies. So what happens then? The kidneys come and play a role or they come and tackle this acidosis and alkalosis. So in acidosis, there is more hydrogen ions when compared to the bicarbonate. So the kidneys come in and they excrete more of these hydrogen ions, and as a result of this, when more hydrogen ions are excreted, there is a reduction in acidity. Remember, increased hydrogen ions is acidity. So they decrease or they excrete the hydrogen ions and hold on to the bicarbonate until we have that particular balance. The same with the alkalosis. In alkalosis, there's more bicarbonate when compared to this hydrogen ion. So the kidneys come in. They hold on to the hydrogen ions and decrease or excrete more bicarbonate until we have that state of balance. So in alkalosis and uh, acidosis, kidneys come in to maintain that particular acid-base balance. And lastly, kidneys play a role in the activation of vitamin D. Vitamin D is obtained uh, from the sun. And Obtain, when it's obtained from the sun, it is in an in, in it is in an inactive form. So when it comes into our bodies, the kidneys activate it or this vitamin D so that it becomes useful to our body. So those are the functions of the kidneys as they help in the maintenance of homeostasis within our body. So let us look at the anatomy of the kidney. Now, as you can see, the kidney is being shaped. Now, the outside of this kidney is what we call the renal capsule. Or in other words, the kidney is enclosed in a capsule referred to as the renal capsule. This capsule is fibrous. And what are the functions of the capsule? The capsule helps to protect this kidney. And number two, it helps in shock absorption. It absorbs the shock which would otherwise damage this particular organ. So, renal capsule protects the kidney and helps to absorb shock. 
Below the renal capsule, we have a, a layer referred to as the renal cortex. This is the layer that lies under the renal capsule. And the inner layer of the kidney is referred to as the renal medulla. So the whole of this layer extending that inside is the renal medulla. As you can see, the renal medulla is made up of various structures. These structures are referred to as the pyramid. So this is a pyramid, this is another pyramid, this is another pyramid. All these are pyramids that are found in the renal medulla. A pyramid is separated from another pyramid by a structure of tissue known as the renal columns. So this is a renal column and that's a renal column. And in most cases, they are intertwined with blood vessels, capillaries, which are actually supplying blood to this particular uh, kidney. Now, the narrow ends of a renal pyramid is referred as the renal papilla. So this is a renal papilla, this is a renal papilla, and that's a renal papilla. Below this renal papilla, we have got these structures, and each one of each uh, uh, and each one of them is referred as a minor calyx. This is a minor calyx, a minor calyx, a minor calyx, and the number of minor calyxes merge to form what is referred to as a major calyx. Now, this area of the kidney is referred to as the renal, uh, the renal hilum. The hilum is that area where blood vessels enter and exit the kidney. So this is the renal hilum, just provides an entry and exit of blood vessels to the kidney. This sac-like structure here now is referred to as the renal pelvis. Now it is it marks the exit of the ureters from the kidneys. So this is the renal pelvis, this area here, or this structure is the renal pelvis. And down here we have the ureter, as we have said, transporting the urine formed from the kidney to the bladder. The bladder stores that urine until it is appropriate time for it to leave our bodies through this particular ureter. So if you look at a flow of urine from uh, a, a, after it has been formed, you find that. It exits the renal papilla into the minor calyx. Then from the minor calyx, the urine goes into the major calyx. From the major calyx, it comes in the renal pelvis, flows down the ureter. It is stored in the bladder temporarily before it is actually leaves our bodies through the ureter. Now I want to mention something very important here. We have what we found as the nephron. The nephron is the major functional unit of the kidney. In other words, it is in the nephron that the work of filtration takes place. And as we are going to see, there is not only filtration, but we also have excretion, we have reabsorption, we have uh, uh, secretion. All these processes are taking place in the nephron to result in the formation of urine. So it is the nephron that is the major functional unit of the kidney. And the nephrons are the ones that give the pyramid this particular, if you cut a cross section of the pyramid, you see this linear structure. So this is because this structure is as a result of the presence of the nephrons, which are the major functional units of this particular kidney. So this brings us to the end of this introductory video on the renal system. As always, drop a comment, like this video, share this video, and if you have not subscribed to this channel, please do so. From me here, it is goodbye.